Okay, let's call a meeting, 7 o'clock. Uh, first order of business will be to swear in uh, newly elected trustee Hauser and uh, Fiscal Officer Sullivan, I believe, is going to do that. Mm -hmm. Stand up your mic, Don. Stand up and down. Raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I, Don Hollister, do solemnly swear. I, Don Hollister, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And will faithfully discharge the duties of Miami Township Trustee in Greene County. And will faithfully discharge the duties of Miami Township Trustee in Greene County. State of Ohio during my continuance. State of Ohio during my continuance. Thank you. Oh. Hmm. Now I have to say that uh, I'm going to have to review the uh, Constitution of the United States and, uh, and the Constitution of the State of Ohio. All right, you get right on it. Well, you can give us a full I, report I, I, the next meeting. I would like to say that I have read both. Good, good. Did you find any I'm Glad conflict? to join you guys. No, no conflict in there? Uh, oh. Yeah. Notice your name is on the door, so you can't get any more official than that. Oh, I didn't. Mm -hmm. wow. No, I didn't notice that. Okay, on with the show. Mm -hmm. um, I need a motion to adopt minutes of January 3rd, 2018. Okay, I will make that motion. I'll second it. I, I was not at the meeting, but there is a typographical error. Uh, Mr. Scoocher tells me in the fire report, uh, of the letter B instead of the number seven. Oh lordy. Mm -hmm. right. Sorry about that. We were like bingo that night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the correction. Mm -hmm. And you saw mine? Uh, we can't, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, I did. Thank right. you. Okay. Hearing no further discussion, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Okay. And now entertain a motion to pay. Uh, bills in the amount of $27,782.24, broken down general fund twenty six ninety six seventy one, fire fund $15,495.23, uh, cemetery $95.34, MS building $31,25.17, broken bridge $43,69.79. Is there a motion? I so move. Is there a second? And I will second that. Any further discussion regarding any of these counts? <clears throat> I hear none. May we vote, please? Mr. Yes. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Correspondence for the period we received a Ohio Township Association newsletter, uh, email from Bradley Payne, which was basically an invoice for uh, their services um, as a municipal advisor. Collective bidding program for 2018 announcement, which Dan's not here, so. I know she was talking about that. Green, Town, Green County Township Association minutes, Association minutes for January 9th. It's very nicely written, I must say so myself. They were. If you it was a very nice story. I did read it. Did you read it? I did. Somebody yeah. actually read it. I read them, yeah. It was nice. I almost brought a tear in my eye. Oh. <laughs> it emailed wow. from ODOT and, um, regarding US 68 and High Road intersection. Um, what? Nothing. Good. I sent a copy of that to you, which yes. is fun. Uh, that was generated from a request from a township resident who, and we've had this discussion, who felt that the trees to the south of High Road obstructed vision of, 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 going, of going north when you were coming from the west. And um, so I contacted somebody I had met at, at uh, ODOT. And he said he had that checked into, and he did. And now they've got, they're going to make all the stop signs are all going to be electrified with all the yeah. red I'm lights are, around it. Hmm. And they're going to put some big overhead overhead thing. I don't know what. I was is. impressed by all that, particularly since we don't really have any accidents anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and but if you did, could actually did it talk to that same guy about 343 and 370. 
must study. Yeah, but you seem, you and this resident seem to have the power to make change. Well, anyway, but but didn't, problem in summer, so. didn't say anything about uh, the tree trimming, though. Oh. Yeah, anyway. There was an accident there just like maybe six You're months right, ago. Uh, email from our attorney, uh, Stephanie Hayden, regarding indigent burials. Oh, and the Department of Commerce regarding indigent burials, and Zenia Township regarding the cremations, which was all part of that. Um, I don't know, we might as well chat about that briefly here, because there's no real appropriate place for it. Like cemeteries, but Dan's not here, so we're not going to talk about cemeteries that much anyway. As we all know, when someone dies in the state of Ohio and is indigent, the political subdivision in which they pass away is responsible for their uh, earthly body disposal of their remains. Yes, thank you. That sounded so. The dog died. <laughs> uh, and, uh, um, and provide a place for those remains to be. Place and a marker of some sort. It doesn't say uh, type size or, or anything other than uh, if known the deceased uh, name, uh, birthday, and death date. Okay, fine and dandy. So if somebody dies in um, uh, Miami Township, it's our responsibility. Somebody dies in the village of Yellow Springs. Uh, Village of Yellow Springs does not have a cemetery, although the Village of Yellow Springs is not detached from Miami Township. So, in a certain small way, the village and the township, of course, are, are one and the same, and therefore the township or the village uh, manager, Patty Bates, asked me a couple weeks ago what our policy was about indigent burials because she's had two requests for indigent burials. Uh, recently, it didn't end up having to go through with them for a, for a couple of legitimate reasons, but she wondered what we would do about that. And I got to thinking to myself, man, we never did that before, mm -hmm. so I don't really know. It's um, never come up. Yeah. It's never come up, come up. So I sent a little message to my new buddy, Laura Monarch, Monarch who's the attorney for the Department of Commerce who controls real estate and cemeteries. And she wrote me back and said she can't help me because she's not my legal subject matter. So I passed that on to Stephanie Hayden, and uh, and she wrote me a very quick response, like, that day, nice and lengthy and thoughtful, and well, hopefully everybody got a chance to read it. Um, but basically saying <coughs> that the, the, the village would be responsible for paying for, if, if this was the case that we're talking about, would be paying for the uh, cremation of the body. And the township would be responsible for pr providing a place for its interment. And then it got a little nebulous as to who would pay for the marker and the uh, opening and closing of the grave. So we have to get, we have to get together maybe sometime with the village and, and determine what the best way to do that is. Um, Patty was a little concerned that, you know, that the family of this indigent should have the ability to decide where they want them buried. And that just didn't seem right with the law, the way I understood it, that they had that uh, uh, responsibility or that ability. And Stephanie said she didn't think they did either. Family, yeah, family, family, yeah. Because if they were that concerned about where, mm -hmm. then they couldn't be that indigent or something, and perhaps they should have you know, arranged for a place. Plus it's ashes. Folk, anyway. yeah. uh, I also <laughs> had mentioned to Patty, and subsequently to Stephanie Hayden, that we do have a memorial scattering garden, and I thought that could be an appropriate place to uh, spread the ashes of, of an, indigent, an indigent person. Uh, my mother's actually spread there, so you know I think it's a nice enough place. And there's a granite monument on the Memorial Scattering Garden, if you haven't been there, 
and the names and birth and death dates of the people who are scattered there, there's only four I think at this point, three or four, um, are marked, are engraved on this monument uh, permanently, plus our cemetery software uh, also tracks their existence or lack of existence in the, in the, in the scattering garden. So that is a way to, to keep a permanent uh, record of that person's uh, disposition. So that would be, that engraving of that, that big boulder would be in the cost, to the cost of the township. It costs the, money to get that the, great, Yeah, so. or the village. I'm not sure. Yeah, whoever decides. Um, we still have to figure out that, that policy, whether mm -hmm. you know, it's a village resident or a township resident. And but it is a possibility. And Ms. Hayden, I'll just finish it. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hayden said uh, that, yes, we could, as a township, we could make that our policy that indigents uh, mm -hmm. are scattered in, the, in there, as opposed to providing a, a grave site somewhere across mm -hmm. in the cemetery. I know nothing's agreed to or nailed down, but where would we turn for cremation? What's that costing? Well, um, we were uh, advised from Xenia Township Administrator, that's the, that's the other piece of correspondence that's in there, um, and, and he has uh, a place that happens to be in Franklin uh, that provides cremations for uh, $550. I think there are a couple churches in town that use Woodlawn and Dayton, and it's less than that. So. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway, um, so at some point, we'll have to address that. It was less than that. Um, as, as I say, in, in my 20 plus years, we haven't had a request either in Clifton or from, from this area, you know, for in the Jeep area. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so that's those. Bunches. RPCC meeting uh, minutes for January 16th. Um, I went, I saw, I heard. And the fund station, fund status, revenue status, preparation status for 2017. Any further correspondence from the board? Mark? No. Done? <coughs> we shall move the fire department report. All right. <coughs> Since the last meeting of the board, there have been 34 EMS calls and 10 fire calls. I have included for you, and well, actually, the updated versions. <laughs> but that's I'm using a template. Uh, these are <laughs> 2017's oh, facts, right. <laughs> not 2016, as is indicated in your packet, which the facts are for 2017, but the template is not correct. Um, <laughs> the uh, So, anyway, uh, it's right there for you. Um, we had 1,156 total runs last year, which is down a little bit. Yeah, it was down from 1,189 the year before. Mm -hmm. um, 897 EMS calls, 259 fire. Fire dropped, EMS went up. Um, in actual dispatch incidents, the number of times they sent us out, it was 1,051, which is less than 1% decrease decrease from the year prior. Mm -hmm. uh, the 39 fire safety inspections, and that number will go up this year with some opportunity fire inspectors. And 20 uh, public education events, and he hit close to 200 kids uh, last year in public, public education activities. <laughs> no. uh, any, any tracking internally or otherwise of Narcan use, overdoses, those sorts of things, trends? Um, I haven't looked at that concerns. yet. Um, but there's nothing significant for us. Okay. Um, we don't have much of an issue here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we administer an arcan maybe two or three times a month, mm -hmm. um, but it's nothing compared to a lot of other places. Yeah. So, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, our patient numbers went up last year. We saw about 30 more patients than we did the year prior. <coughs> uh, did fewer transports, however, more people were treated and released. Uh, and we had, uh, I don't know if it's case anything, but we had more dead people than we did the year before. And still, in terms of destinations, the vast majority of our patients go to Green and Soin um, at the expense of everywhere else. No real changes. My uh, Springfield Regional saw an increase, which is surprising. Mm -hmm. um, the Valley had a real brief little increase. Children stayed the same, right past and down. Kettering went up, doubled. And uh, we actually went to Grandview and Southview last year. So, we're high each. Oh. 
And your EMS billing increased from the year before, as I recall. Yes, we had pretty good. Yeah, and we had an increase in rates. Uh, was that attributable, attributable to the? Do you think to the med account tr tr changeover in the system, the software system? Oh yeah, certainly. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I think a lot of that is due to the better reporting that we're able. To, I mean, to get them to report, mm -hmm. there's no longer a middle person. Mm -hmm. So everything goes directly to them. Um, coupled with that, we did increase our rates to keep track of Medicare and Medicaid allowances. Mm -hmm. uh, and our billing, our mileage rate also went up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that all that added up to more, more income for us. <coughs> what do you mean our mileage rates went up? Uh, we, under Medicare and Medicaid rules, we're allowed to charge a uh, bill for every loaded mile we, we travel. So the mileage rate. Medicare increased it, so we increased it uh, on the recommendation of that account. Um, and ah, off the top of my head, I can't remember. What I, I can't remember what it is. Like eight dollars a mile or something. Um, but it used to be we just part of it was nice. We used to just they did a generic eight miles to green. Mm -hmm. So every hospital, regardless of where you went, you got eight miles worth of billing. Now with the new software we have, we track the mileage. So we're getting the actual mileage reimbursement. So going to Soren helps. It's anywhere from 12 to 18 miles, depending on where in the township. Um, and uh, you know, every now and then, if you go to the valley or uh, Kettering, <laughs> some serious change. Mm -hmm. Chunk of change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know we continue to benefit from having a very large population of insured people, here, which is very nice, mm -hmm. and having a very high collection rate. Danny and I met with our med account rent reps. Back in November, I think, they came to give us the annual spiel. Um, and they're just floored by our, our collection rate. Really? Uh, that you know, people call them and say, oh, hey, I got a bill from you. Don't I owe you money? Uh, <laughs> that is not <laughs> gone. Uh, I think we were, for the, the first six months of this year, we were at almost a 90% collection, which is unheard of. Yeah. Uh, most fire departments are anywhere from 40 to 55%. Yeah, didn't we start off somewhere in the high 60s? Yeah, we've always been good yeah. <laughs> for that. So that's really gone up. So yeah, he's uh, this, and he's a new rep for us. So he was extremely impressed. <laughs> so. On the fire runs, is there a breakout of you know what typically happens? Is it the dryer catches fire? Is it electric? Is it Kitchen stove, but not typical. What kinds of things? The vast majority, I mean, I haven't run the full report yet. Um, the vast majority of the fire incidents are uh, car crashes and uh, what are called medic assists, where one of the fire trucks goes to assist the ambulance. Uh, the number is down, I suspect, again, I haven't run the full report yet, but I suspect we dropped from 307 fire calls in 2016 to 259 because our staffing is so short. We haven't been able to get a fire truck out to assist the ambulance when needed. Um, we had a couple of actual fires in 2017, our, our own, because the previous year, I think all the fires we went to were somewhere else, mm -hmm. in the township. Mm -hmm. um, fire alarms are still not a big concern as they were in the old Antioch. Um, they're pretty good. So most are, are those non-fire you know, non type incidents, like a crash or a, or a medical so, so literally, there were three fires. Pretty much, yeah. three or four mm -hmm. actual fires. Um, I would think. I Again, mean, I've got to run the numbers. Sometimes I'm surprised, <coughs> but no more than five or six. Um, and then you know the rest of the fire incidents are made up of smoke investigations, gas odors, that type of thing. So lines down. All right, any other questions for the chief? Anything else from the chief? Yes. All right. Well, let me do volunteer for oh, one. Right. I forgot. Yeah. It's on the email. Resolution 2018 whatever Margaret says four. it is. Four. No, excuse me. What? Wait, wait, hold on. Stand by. Four? Five. Well, I, I have one, so I have already got printed mine is four, so. So it's four? So it's five. Oh, five. Okay. Well, I mean, as long as you know what it is. Hey, wait a minute. Why don't I have this? Why do I have the resolution? Is it at the oh. end? No. no, it's... It's in your packet. Oh, it's in yours? Oh, yeah, okay. in, in my packet. I got you. Mm -hmm. the, the chief packet. Mm -hmm. 
Um, anyway, uh, so uh, the guy's name is Terry Leisher. Uh, he is a resident of Huber Heights, went to Fairborn High School, and he uh, grew up with one of our current volunteers, Dakota Cox. Um, so he's passed all our, went through all our hoops and everything. He was a nice guy, a younger guy. You trained at all? Uh, no. He had some training. He lived in Washington State for a while. Uh, so he had some training there, but it doesn't carry over here, unfortunately. So. Um, I had a question. Uh, how many of those deceased was uh, overdose deaths? That's a good question. There may have been a couple. I'd have to take a, a deeper look at that. Um, maybe one or two. But that, I, I don't think anything more than that. That's out of nine deceased. Yeah. And those are patients that we went to when they were dead and not there. There may be other patients who died after. <laughs> after we got back to them, but no. Okay, now entertain a motion for adoption of resolution 2018-05, appointment of <coughs> MTFR volunteer personnel, reads, whereas continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the fire department, rescue department, and whereas Terry Lesher has completed all necessary application materials, background checks, and interviews, to be appointed as a volunteer for the fire rescue department, and whereas Chief Altman has recommended the appointment of this candidate, and whereas funds are available for the purpose of training and equipping volunteer personnel within the fire department's operating budget, and now therefore be resolved that the above candidate shall be appointed to volunteer positions within the fire rescue department effective January 17, 2018. Is there a motion for that approval? Yes. Second. The motion is second. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next up is, uh, just for your information, our recruiting, a new recruiting logo is complete. Uh, you see that today. Um, <coughs> and this is now adorning our Facebook recruitment site. Mm -hmm. Be going on to uh, mailing cards that we'll be sending out to people uh, and some other items as well uh, to help hopefully get some people. Everyday Heroes Wanted. Yep. <laughs> the tagline or design can be Is this, is this uh, Nate's project that's working its way through? Or? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, this is this is Project Nate's and spearheading. Uh, this was all designed by Clay Stain here in town. Mm -hmm. This, a couple different versions of it for different media, um, and they're working with us on, on the actual marketing plan as well. So that we can get our get the word out, get the name out to people, the appropriate target audiences, and that <coughs> So, uh, well, I'm sure we'll be spending substantially more time on these issues here directly. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully it's going to work. It's going to net us some people, but. Uh, <coughs> Keep my fingers crossed. Uh, which is a perfect segue into staffing. Uh, attached to your packets, uh, not, not for discussion tonight, because you're just getting it, but maybe for next week or next uh, next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Alex uh, did a, uh, com a study comparing our, us to multiple other fire departments in Miami Valley that are of similar run volume size mm -hmm. uh, in terms of staffing, budget, and all those type of things. Uh, so his report is attached. Um, for you, uh, and he also presented us with some recommenda you know, recommendations based on other places and what he he was recommending. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I'll stress that that's just his recommendations. Um, ben and I are still working to figure out, you know, look at our budget for this year and see. You know, it is it's very clear to us that you know, we need to make some shifts in the way we're staffed right now to help cover the multiple holes that we have in the schedule um, because we want that effect. So, uh, but I mean, the staff we do have right now, the volunteers we have, are pitching in as much as we can. We just don't have enough mm -hmm. to, to adequately cover. Uh, you know, we've got most of our volunteer staff at this point are doing five or six nights a month, which is you know quite a bit mm -hmm. of time at twelve-hour shifts. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at the uh, different options, and Alex lays out a few of them in there. Um, we have, he's also talked about some of the stuff with the staff that we have. We have implemented a few of those things that you, you guys improved last year. Um, uh, moving 
Joe, Nate, and Jason for volunteer status after hours to uh, pay on call, pay per call status mm -hmm. to comply with the federal regulations, and now they're also paid for training, required training after hours. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking into you know one of the problems that's popped up for us now in terms of staffing is uh, all of our EMTs, actually all the staff now is uh, they're broken into eight um, Saturday night crews. There's no one who wants to so once every eight weeks, you have to cover Saturday night, uh, which isn't a whole lot, but people have, you know, they have lives, and you can see more often than not, it seems to, you know, your Saturday falls when little Jenny's got a dance recital or whatever, and then there's no one available to cover. So, um, so we're looking at some incentive type things for Saturday nights as well, you know, you know obviously people are kind of get rich, but maybe something to make it a little bit sweeter to say to the husband or the wife, hey, I can't make it tonight, I got to Mm -hmm. uh, but at least I got 50 bucks, or you know, or, <laughs> or a water bottle, or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, the most, you know, the most reasonable thing for long term for us that we're looking at is taking the three full time staff we have, Joe, Jason, and, and Nate, whoever may be in those positions someday, but, mm -hmm. um, and putting them on a standard fire department 24 hour shift. Mm -hmm. uh, so one person would be on every three days for 24 hours, and then there would always be one paramedic. Firefighter and person with some supervisory experience here, here at the station, or at the station um, 24 7. Um, so then basically, to get an ambulance crew, we just need one more volunteer, mm -hmm. uh, which makes life a lot easier on trying to find two uh, or three or whatever. Um, obviously, that costs more money, and then you get into issues with the two who aren't currently in the pension would then be in the pension. Um, Alex actually went through, and thank God for Alex. Um, came up with a whole spreadsheet that does the calculation for me because he got the formulas for the pension program and yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I got to play with that. Uh, that's my project for tomorrow. I never thought I'd be excited about playing with an Excel spreadsheet, but <laughs> this, this should be good. Um, and in there, you know, it does, you know, and these are some things that I know at least the two of you are aware of just because you've been here. Um, but I mean, some of these things, it just kind of boggles my mind when I look at other departments. Sugar Creek Township, a $2.7 million budget with 12 full-time firefighters, 26 part-timers, and they did less calls than we did for the last four years running. Uh, Bellbrook's another one, 1.2 million with six full-time guys, they did 743 calls. You know, and I, and I don't mean that as a criticism of us that, oh, why do we have 2.7 yeah. million? Because personally, I believe that's insane. <laughs> you know? Um, I mean, every time Sugar Creek has more guys on staff, on a shift than Xenia does, a city of 25,000 people. So I mean, they're clearly some crazy things. And I think the model we have here is very efficient and effective. We just need to boost up the volunteer side. And you know, we've had the same staffing, paid staffing model for you know, 15 years. And we haven't really adapted and changed with our run volume going up as our volunteers go down. So we, we need to look at those changes and, and do what's best for the township. So, uh, luckily, I don't think it's horrifically expensive. You know, hopefully, we can move money around with budgets and stuff like that. And see, but but you have that report now, so you can take a look. Obviously, and discuss it even further. Um, it's definitely uh, our top priority for for this year mm -hmm. is is this and mm -hmm. figuring out how to get more volunteers in, how to keep them. That's so, definitely a struggle. Hmm. And I mean, it's also not, not just us. I mean, uh, you two are aware of that, yeah. right? that, that it's not just Yellow Springs or like Township. So. No. no. This is a problem. I travel over the state and I hear guys doing the same thing. I mean, it's so. right in front of us. Every, yeah. Every, yeah. Every minute. Yeah. 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 You, you mean all the uh, gaps on the board? Yep. Yeah. You see a lot more pictures up there. That's uh, for sure. Pictures. And that's for sure. So, you know, and, and we're looking, you know. I'm always, I'm always happy when, you know, people on my staff grow and move on to different mm -hmm. things. Until we're at this point where someone mm -hmm. comes and says, hey, I think I might be moving to, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to go to California. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So do I. <laughs> you know, you're not going anywhere. So, um, 
so far my friends have worked, but we'll, uh, eventually I think these people are going to stop believing me and <laughs> they're going to move off. So, um, you know, and that's national trend is small towns, not a lot of opportunity for younger people, they move on. We used to rely on the college. We have one student right now. I think they have 12 total. So, you know, <laughs> regardless, you know, it's, it's things aren't working on paper. So, uh, but we're committed to it. And I mean, the board is committed to a combination of staffing model. Mm -hmm. We are in the park still. So. But the, the demands on the individual have gone up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Constantly. Yeah, and that is, you know, since I joined as, since I was appointed as fire chief, mm -hmm. the key class has increased by 72 hours. Mm -hmm. Fire class, <coughs> the most recent addition, has gone up by about 42 hours. So, uh, mm -hmm. it's amazing. So it's, you know, it's a lot of, it's important stuff that's added to these curriculums. I don't think they're adding frivolous things, but by the same token, it makes it very difficult for a volunteer you know, it's hard for me to sit down with someone and say, hey, well, the fire department, yeah, great, you know, okay, EMT class is going to take you four and a half months, mm -hmm. two nights a week. Fire class is going to take you uh, three months, two nights a week and every Saturday, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and it's it's very difficult. I was in a meeting recently in Athens and the state fire marshal and a number of people, you know, there's new hours added to the fire curriculum just recently. And guys are like, you know, we're at a breaking point. Mm -hmm. What do we do? With, and there's no solution. There's no easy solution. People need the service, they need quality service. Mm -hmm. We need guys who are trained well. Um, yep. And that takes time. But, you know, the state is helping. I mean, I will give the Marshal's office, you know, they've done a great thing with the reimbursement grant that we've received. Um, you can send someone out a Firefighter One class for free. You know, there's grant money to help cover the cost completely free up front. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they're they're trying with the Bureau of Workers' Comp, a joint thing, to, to get that set through. Mm -hmm. You know, finding people who can take that time away from their job, their family, and everything is uh, tougher and tougher every year. Well, I, would, I look forward to reading this. And okay. we schedule next agenda talking about Alex's evaluation. Um, we could certainly, I mean, we could talk about that, you know. Because I was going to say we tend to uh, focus on the fire department pretty much every meeting, but uh, yeah, I definitely think that this is a, a big issue. All right, anything else? That's it for me. I think that was enough. Yes. <laughs> Mark, anything? Um, no. Don, no anything aside from the fact that you look great on TV. Oh, okay. Oh, um, <laughs> just to tell you, know, we had the, the big door fixed again. Um, we decided to have about a two-inch <laughs> gap at the bottom, so we, we heated outside the, last night. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's taken care of, and uh, we've got to do some roof repair. Responsible for since we're leasing that part of the building. Yes, we are responsible, but certain things the village <laughs> and the senior center. We have the concrete work that we just recently did. We split three ways, and the, and the painting we split when we painted the building. We split yeah, the village, sixty forty something like that. Uh, and then some things we just do. I mean, we replace the outside lights just because we had to. So we took care. It was actually what cost. It's kind of like if it's on our side, yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. on their side. They're happy to have us there, um, sure. And uh, you know, especially if you know, this deal we're working on with Cedar Hill works to, to transform that more into a training facility. Um, mm -hmm. I spoke with Mayor Alex, and he's a little pink to, <laughs> you know, to have some activities going on there. And it doesn't cost us a so whole. I mean, I think the furnaces in Clifton are far more efficient than they are here. So, <laughs> <laughs> we to do a far newer. newer. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is true. And we had to do a furnace. It was right, like one of some of the coldest <coughs> days. Steve McFarland, part of his responsibilities, was put in order to check their buildings. We found that the bay furnace wasn't dwelling. Um, I think it was actually, actually a trustee's bay. Because they left here, 
he called me, so we took the space heater over. And I didn't realize the main water pipe for the building is right there by the furnace room, but it's exposed to all the cold air. So we just put that out. They made it to the night, and AC took care of it the next day. I don't think it was necessarily them to build this 300 bucks. I don't think it was a major cost, but that's it. All right. Hopefully, no more repairs. I would not uh, entertain, not entertain, I'd like to move into an executive <laughs> session for matters of personnel compensation. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. And uh, okay, so as a result of the executive session, we've decided that uh, we're going to change your yearly compensation from whatever it is now, to, and we're going to add $10,000 per year to it beginning okay. at the next pay period. And basically for three reasons, Colin. One, you haven't had a, a an official merit-based pay increase in a while. I don't know exactly how many, but it's got to be four plus years somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, to a reflection from the board of the appreciation of the quality of work that you, that you continue to do. Um, and three, unfortunately for you, uh, the amount of work, extra work you're going to do in the next uh, 12, 14, 19 months, you know, however it works out to be, to where this new facility gets up and running, running smoothly, everybody knows where they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. and, and those sorts of things. So, um, <laughs> so, so I can do that? <laughs> yeah, you gotta do that. <laughs> so I anyway, give it to the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> we thought about that, but he wouldn't do it. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's what we decided to do, and I will make the motion for that to be official. Thank you very much. Second it. Is there any further discussion regarding that? Um, I just need clarification. Do I give you ten thousand dollars next week? <laughs> no, what, no, what? What is the? What? It changes base salary from what it is now to ten thousand more, but you can then break it down. Yeah, but don't start at the beginning of the year, so don't cause yourself a right. uh, a, a hizzy fit. <laughs> you don't like my hizzy fit. Start, I don't like your hizzy fit. <laughs> <laughs> what I heard your your wording was starting at the next pay period. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so I'll take what his annual salary is, add ten thousand dollars, and bring it back down to the right. end of the week, right? Yes. Thank you. Just want to make sure I do all right, because mm -hmm. once we give him that money, you know, it's gonna be hard. Good luck getting it back. Yeah, you ain't going to back there. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah. Congratulations, Colin. So we you deserve it. We haven't voted yet. Oh, no, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> we shall soon. And have I said how nice you are? <laughs> <laughs> May we vote, please? Sure. Mr. Mucher? <laughs> yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Okay, new fire station report. Uh, you have anything, or you just prefer me to prattle on about today's activities? Well, yeah, if you want to start, I'll just. And what's tomorrow? Jeff, then. Uh, okay. I can't. If, if we're in the, the 10 o'clock phone conference, yeah. I can't, I, I'll be in Troy at a meeting. Uh, but then, then, he, then he said he would do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we had we had this what it ended up being a teleconference today instead of an actual meeting where these people came here, which was what's going to happen on a monthly basis, starting in a couple months when we get construction underway. Um, I won't go into that whole thing again, but the the, the, the teleconference we had today uh, was with USDA and. What ended up being two members of MSA, Dan Montgomery and Nestor Nye. Um, it, it actually was not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be all about and virtually totally remuneration of, of expenses that had been submitted to them for payment, um, which is what this meeting will be on an ongoing basis, but it wasn't really what it was today. It was was more of, well, how's everything going? Fine, how's the drawings? You can get us permits, you know, this, that, and the other thing. We did get to the to the uh, uh, cash part of it, and Margaret and Cindy Cameron talked for a while, and I'm not sure where they stand on that. I assume we will we will get this electronic transfer into our account to pay these uh, uh, both reimbursements and a few standing expenses that we have 
for both MSA and Bradley Payne, they come 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 to mind before our next meeting, so that we can write checks for that uh, purpose, which is which is how this system is going to go. Uh, prior meetings, prior authorization, uh, electronic transfer, and then we we have the ability to write the checks on, on our meeting uh, night. Um, so, um, <laughs> but at the end of the at the end of the teleconference. Uh, I made the mistake of asking Dan Montgomery, I said, you know, Dan, I've been asking you for weeks now, have you gotten any better handle on the cost of the, the final cost of the building? And he says, well, and he hems and haws for how many, yeah, we've sent it out and we got it back and we sent it to our design teams and they've looked at it a couple of times and then we got it back and then we looked at it and said, okay. So, I don't have all these numbers off the top of my head, but the biggest one I have is well, about seventy-five plus thousand uh, dollars over budget, and so they have gone to great detail. I don't know where the great detail went, but it's it's available. We printed it out. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. here's your uh, I don't know if you've seen that yet, but you will. Great deal, mm -hmm. deal, detail to explain explain each an individual suggestion as to where something should be cut or modified and the and the cost savings as a, as a result of that change uh, as mark pointed out it wasn't an either or it was like this is what you know this is what it's going to be um, and they want to have a, 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 a another phone conference uh, with the fire department and me tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to further <laughs> refine um, and or approve of these cuts. And I'm not real comfortable with making that final decision in 24 hours. Uh, I don't know how strongly you have felt about what you've seen or how strongly Denny's felt about what he's seen. I have, I have some thoughts about it and, and and Dan and I did spend a fair amount of time at the end of the conversation uh, talking about possibilities of, of saving money in other in areas that aren't listed here. Uh, um, no landscaping and the curb, the amount of curbs used, and just uh, some some other different things. And you <coughs> mentioned the thing about the potential of the, the water pump. You might be able to talk with Danny or Johnny Burns about that, so that might save us a little money. Um, so anyway, uh, that's not terribly good news, <coughs> but that also takes into consideration cutting the the contingency money from five hundred plus thousand dollars to like two hundred four, like from ten percent to five percent, which I know <coughs> Ashley is going to have a snit about because he was real insistent on having. A big contingency there. Uh, but apparently, uh, Nestor feels that they can get away with the five percent uh, contingency. And he says, and he's the professional. He says that their estimators uh, typically estimate on the <coughs> low end of the middle of where they think it might come out. And more often than not, these bids come in below that estimation. So if that's the case, we're in a little better shape. Yeah. And I don't know if Dan's had a chance to look at the entire thing, because it came after I think he was gone for the day. Mm -hmm. I went through the well, that's what I was engineering say. efficiencies, or whatever he calls them. It's a very yeah. nice little government kind of term. I haven't looked at with a fine tooth comb. There's certainly some things, you know, Joe and I were talking, you know, talking about eliminating the mirrors in the fitness room. Right. Well, we can do that ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can go out and find mirrors and see what they're all doing. Right. Um, some things, you know, eliminating a sink in the treatment room would kind of be a sink. Yeah. I also didn't realize it's $3,800 for yeah. that plumbing. But, but I mean, there's certain things we definitely need to <coughs> think I think that's what he's looking for, though. But I think we need a little more time right. than 24 hours. Right. I mean, because yeah. that's what I was going to say. I, it seems to me that it, it's really a time sequence. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we need weeks, but a couple of days would be nice just to 
to look it over and look at the plans. <coughs> and I, thought I, was I didn't even know we had a window in the treatment room. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, well, shit, get rid of it. Yeah. Why don't you need a window in the treatment room if you've got a naked patient in there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dan seems to have, have run hot and cold. I mean, he, he takes a long time to do things, because obviously it takes a long time to do stuff. But then when he's done it, you know, he wants it done, you know, either approved or signed off on or, yeah, well, you know. PM. We'll get the new, yeah. Right. Yeah, he's, so, it's interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, I assume all this includes the um, tornado shelter. Oh, yeah. That's really what it's. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, that reminds me about the tornado shelter. I'm not going to go on and on about the tornado shelter. But the, tra <coughs> the tornado shelter is a brand new requirement just as of uh, November 1 of last year. And so it hasn't been, obviously, they haven't been incorporated into too many buildings. So in the infinite wisdom of, of whoever, apparently architects are not qualified to design tornado shelters to the new specifications. And so we have to spend between five and $10,000 to have some overseer look over the drawings and the specifications to make sure that they meet what the new requirements are. So there's another. What's the new and requirements? My, a TV? Five, six, well, eight thousand bucks. A sauna? <laughs> sure, that'd be nice. That my, is, uh, my sister, was, oh, sorry, who's a, uh, an attorney in uh, Milburn, New Jersey, um, her observation was that it was a good feature to have um, because with Sandy, there was no, <laughs> there were no shelters available, and, and there still aren't as far as she knows. I mean, it's definitely a good feature for an essential building. I mean, that's, I mean, that's part of our, I don't want to say problem, because if we could have called it a township office that happened mm -hmm. to maybe have a small fire department in it, <laughs> it would have mm -hmm. been better, but being a fire station, mm -hmm. or an essential facility, which requires a generator. Mm -hmm. All that kind of thing. So you know, when you look at those those initial costs that blew us out of the water, the domestic water pump, the mm -hmm. fire pump, and the storm shelter. I think those were the three. Right? Yeah, we were. Those were all two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we can work on that domestic water pump, that'll save us. Some. As I said, I don't believe we could ever get out of the fire pump. Just because. Right. Yeah, but I think I saw two hundred and two sprinkler heads in this. That's a pretty big system. Mm -hmm. But anything we can find that can help finesse some of that stuff out. You know, generator is what it is. We have a generator, so. Yeah. yeah. And I still don't want to lose the... But, no. What do we call yeah, those? Brackets. 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 Yeah. So. They're nice. Yeah. I saw that as an item. Like, this is like, we really <laughs> don't like that. Even fighting tooth and nail for those yeah. brackets. Um, <laughs> All right. It is interesting, though, in the other documents he sent out today from the estimators, mm -hmm. how much money you know, the construction itself actually isn't as expensive as I thought. It's it's the HVAC. I mean, it's the specialty areas. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the HVAC stuff is almost half a million. Mm -hmm. you know, the plumbing is four hundred thousand. Yeah. Electric. I mean, I knew those things are expensive. I just didn't realize. Yeah, that is expensive. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so yeah, it's interesting. It's a learning thing for all of us. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Anything further on the new station? Uh, we're going to go past Cemetery and Road, other than I've been out plowing from salt. We're going to uh, hire a part-time person here directly to uh, work <coughs> full-time, part-time in the, in the road department uh, and be able to uh, work with the type of hours and and equipment that we need to keep the roads clean in the winter time. So anyway. having fun. No. no. The roads will look nice, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dan or you, whoever's, <laughs> I mean, we've been nicely plowed here in Clifton. And, so. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 I mean, he, it, it's all, I mean, it's 99.9% .9 him, and <coughs> we just can't ask him to constantly just you know, every two hours go out and then come back to the garage and just sit in a chair and, and nod right. off for a half an hour and then go back out and do it again. That's just, yeah. it, it's just not fair to an employee. Oh, come on. Fiscal officer's report. Um, 
Or is it? Or is it? Or is it was physical officers? Report. <laughs> Right. Um, go yeah. Physical officer. I, we need to amend the temporary appropriations that we just um, adopted last meeting because I'm only allowed to appropriate a quarter of what we generally appropriate for the year because we only have so much money at the beginning of the year. We can't over. We can't appropriate more than what we have. That makes perfect sense, right? Sure. Right. Okay. <laughs> Resolution 2018-04, Amendment of Temporary Appropriations, whereas it is an ongoing process to determine, determine appropriations for fiscal year 2018, and whereas it is required to submit any and all appropriation changes made to the 2018 budget to the county auditor, excuse me, auditor. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize the following changes to the temporary appropriations and instruct the fiscal officer to submit them to the county auditor. In the fire fund, I need to increase um, workers' comp by 1,000, and in general fund, this is the line item that we pay expenses for the new firehouse. <clears throat> increase that by 1300 I only increased it by as much as I absolutely needed for this at this time. And hopes that we will soon get some money deposited in our checking account for the, for the USDA. Anyway, we have increase that by $1,300. That's it. All right. Is there a motion to approve 2014 for? 2018-4. <laughs> I knew there was a four in there somewhere. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah. I so move. <laughs> I'll second that. There's a motion and a second for the discussion regarding this <coughs> resolution. Hearing none, none, may we vote please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Oops. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Let me make a correction there. Um, and um, I'm repeating myself, but for the sake of the public, it did provide everybody with appropriations for the, our appropriation totals for the end of 2017 so everybody knows exactly how much we spent on each line item how much we needed last year um, at the end of the year and I also have provided everybody with um, a report showing approximately how much we will have to spend and appropriate in 2018 so when everybody you know, just take a look at it, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, and we can hopefully, there's not a lot of wiggle room, and we appropriated pretty accurately last year, so, you know, this, the, for the, we might have a little bit of movement in some of the numbers, especially with the fire department. But um, anyway, I think about, I did, I know you did ask Dan if he has any, a wish list of some, a piece of equipment or something that maybe would, could be purchased this year, so where it says machinery, equipment, and furniture in one of the road funds, we could put 30000 in there or something like that. I don't know what he wants, but... I took a quick look through the, the whole thing this afternoon, mm -hmm. and uh, just, as I like to do, just make broad generalizations, I'm sorry, uh, but if we just took what we didn't spend, but we didn't, what we budgeted for and didn't spend, and, yeah, and subtracted them, the general fund, uh, we have twelve thousand dollars extra than uh, uh, than we thought we were going to have. Twelve thousand dollars more than we thought we were going to have uh, in the uh, gas tax fund. Uh, tw uh, additionally, twelve thousand dollars more than we thought we were going to have at the end of the year. Um, the uh, road and bridge, uh, uh, not so lucky. They were very close to. Uh, well, seven thousand. Well, seven thousand extra. I guess that was a little more than I thought. Um, they they run pretty close. Um, the fire was uh, twenty two thousand over extra, 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 yeah. And the uh, EMS uh, billing uh, about fifteen thousand extra. I didn't add all those up, but you know, if you add them all up, you're looking at uh, fifty sixty thousand total. It's not a whole lot for the whole department, but it, it's on the right end of the of the, of the plus and minus scale. Anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, maybe we can you know make some of those adjustments, move some of that extra into the the typical the contracted services line that we need stuff in the machinery, equipment, the supplies, the building, you know, funds, right that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, we're going to need substantial money for some 
furniture and fixtures as the year comes up. <laughs> That's all I had for fist bumps. Is there anything else, Don? Nope. Mark? <laughs> okay. I'm leaving. Oh, just oh wait. What? Uh, a quick question for the install, sir. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any, like, a $7,400 grant? Grant coming yet? Okay. No. Is that, is that for the housing thing? No, this was for the, this is for the BWC for our gear, uh, gear washer. It's oh, either yeah. coming from the BWC or administrative services. Well, I'll certainly let you know. Yeah, it's an EFT. It should be addressed to you anyway. But. Well, it's coming as an EFT. The oh, they the, may be there then. Yeah, it's because uh, we had to give them all the account numbers because they don't it, want it, For January, right? It wouldn't be in December's. Possibly late December. They said it would oh, look. be I have my for 60 December. days from when they gave it to us, mm -hmm. and then we, we have nine months to. They have like eight weeks to give us the money. Oh, well, I, I, now, that you've, now that you've brought it to my attention, I can certainly. I can, I'll get the exact I, can see if, I can see if we've got it yet. But it's, it's 74 something for me to BWC or DAS. And it's for the. The physical washer. Yeah, the gear extractor that Alex got us the grant for. Okay. All righty, moving right along. Um, no zoning, standing committee, and BRPC did not meet this this uh, past month. Regional planning did meet. Nothing exciting. It's just uh, some uh, text amendments. Uh, one subdivision in, in uh, Sugar Creek Township. Um, and again, the senior center of note, Mark. I did get. Uh, print out of the activities and they are quite active, but um, I haven't personally not done anything. Mm -hmm. okay. um, obviously, the community cemetery not yet, uh, we need to get that cranked up. Um, we have a... Uh, I did do the um, Christmas... Get back to the report. Um, uh, Dan will put together. Don, Dan will put together a, uh, uh, a um, an invoice, basically, from Miami Township to the uh, Clifton Union Cemetery Board for reimbursement for maintenance that we performed for the cemetery over the past 12 months. Uh, Miami Township is contracted to do that work for the board. The uh, two townships, Green Township, <coughs> Clark County, and us split that cost uh, uh, in theory 50 50. Uh, we'll get into that further as the year goes on. Yeah. Uh, Economic Sustainability Committee, anything with that, Mark? Any of meetings? No. And Grail Mill is coming right along and happily used over Christmas by one of the members of the Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. Any new business this evening? Mark? No. Don? Nope. The old business this evening. Don? No. No, Mark? <laughs> hey, don't get ahead of me, man. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hearing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I have so moved. Mr. Hollis, for saying all.